All right, so thanks for joining me in today's video. And what I want to share with you in this episode is to go ahead and show you how to properly set up and build a portfolio with options. So that's what we're going to do and check out. And I definitely want to remind you, none of these are recommendations to buy, sell, or trade anything. Just my own opinion. If you want to grab that, just make sure to check out our Traders Fly website. That's where I share a lot of my opinions along with training, education. There's a lot of live classes here. Uh, even if you can't attend one live, um, you can also get the recordings here. So there's a lot of good stuff from option trading to tech technical analysis uh, that I've been building over the last few years. And if you want to do one-on-one -on -one coaching session as well, you could reach out as well. All right, so let's kind of get started. We're going to go ahead and check out how to build a portfolio. And I'm going to go ahead and share with you one of the PowerPoints I have from the live classes. Okay, so first off, when we look at a portfolio, and I'm just using this Discord channel that I have um, to be able to draw on it, a lot of people, when they look at a stock portfolio, they're looking at, you know, just a, a handful of different holdings and they're kind of allocating, okay, well, here I've got Microsoft, uh, I've got Apple, I've got maybe Tesla, Caterpillar. So you look at it and you say, hey, am I diversified? Am I uh, really spread out? Maybe you've got some apparel stuff, a and um, and maybe some uh, ETF like a SPY. And now you might have different amounts of capital. You might have 1,000 in Tesla, maybe 3,000 in Apple, maybe 2,000 in Microsoft, and so on. Now, with an options portfolio, it's a little bit different because this is making you money usually from appreciation of stock, right? And this is all based on kind of the delta, um, or in other words, you've bought shares. That's kind of your delta, and as it goes up, you make money. Now, in the options world, it's going to be a little bit different. And the way that we break things down is going to be different because of that, uh, because we have different ways that we can make uh, money with options. So we can make money based on time, which is like theta decay or time decay. Um, then we can also make money from delta just from the sheer fact of the price going up. Or we can also make money from the vega or volatility. Now, you could go ahead and craft different strategies that hit different points. Uh, but as you go ahead and spread this out, what you want to do is start looking at, hey, well, how do I go in and make a little bit of money from time? And I might have three or four different strategies here. And then how do I make money from Delta, which is like long investing or could be like technical analysis. And there might be three or four strategies there. So let me show you a little bit of a picture here that might give you a little insight um, to uh, dealing with building a portfolio in options. So this is a slide that I usually use for my mentoring students. It just gives you a rough idea. So now a quick shout out from our sponsor. If you're on information overload and you can't figure out if you should pull the trigger on a stock, then go ahead and check out VectorVest Stock Analysis Report. It's absolutely free and rates every stock, whether you should be a buyer, seller, or hold the stock, given the fundamental analysis and technicals. So that way you can make smarter and wiser trading decisions. You can check out VectorVest by visiting VectorVest.com or seeing the link in the description below. So in the options world, we want to go ahead and also look at uh, constructing a portfolio logically and rationally where we might have like a long portfolio here and this long portfolio we've got about 50 percent of our account so if we have you know um hundred thousand dollars we might put in uh fifty thousand dollars into this okay uh then what we'll do is we'll look at a medium portfolio and the medium portfolio this is where we make money from time okay the long portfolio is a little different because we make money from appreciation or the delta. So this is from price moving up. And speculative is kind of like our idea or opinion. So it's kind of like, what do we think? It might be speculative. It could be earnings. It could be day trading. Uh, there could be a lot of other things that are speculative. Now, these do not add up to 100%. As you can see, we've got 50% maybe long portfolio, 30% medium. So this is the time value, or in other words, the theta. And then we've got 5% here. So where's the rest of it well don't forget we've got cash uh, side money that's uh, over here in this area and this is where the rest of the uh, holdings or portfolio kind of sits in order if we need to add fuel now we'll say that these values will change from time to time so as we look into this and say hey long portfolio 50 percent well this we're making money when the stock prices head higher well when do we want to be more long invested well after a market crash probably so when the market crashes, we want to start ramping this number up. Or if we're a little toppy, we'll ramp this number down or, or tweak it to be a little lower. So if the market is high, maybe 30%. A market sold off, 
maybe 60%. So you start looking at it and you start tweaking these numbers a little bit more depending on the environment. You know, if stocks are a little more stagnant, maybe you'll do more non-directional. Um, uh, stocks are moving sideways or choppy. Maybe you do more uh, theta-based trades. So that's kind of a, a different way of looking at it. And now you've got a construction to a portfolio. In a similar way that a, a long investor uh, continues to hold their stock as that stock continues to head lower, uh, as a long portfolio investor when it comes to options, what you'll do is you'll go ahead and if you have a vertical with, uh, let's say, 20 delta, you might go ahead and recalibrate it or readjust it when it gets to a 30 delta or 40 delta and you say, hey, let me reset that position to again another 20 delta because the options will change in their delta. But in this case, what you would do is just readjust it. Okay, so this is kind of the way we would look at a portfolio rather than just like, hey, I've got a whole bunch of stocks for the upside. Now we're making money not just from the upside, but what if stocks don't move? We're making money from theta and time decay. And that's really nice and beneficial. Now, here's another one in a pie shape form. If you go a little deeper, you could look at it this way. Maybe maybe the triangle did not appeal to you. So what we can do is go ahead and look at it this way. And here I've got different types of trades. So I've got maybe speculative zero days till expiration trades, which a lot of people like to do, uh, or speculative day trades. And you can see it's a smaller amount or a chunk of my account or portfolio right here. Now, the core of the portfolio could be verticals. It could be partly diagonals. But you could see a large chunk um, of that portfolio is right here. This is the large portion of that portfolio, more than half of that portfolio for a long investing for prices to go up. I mean, that's just typical investing, but you could tweak it. You could be actually short. You could be more non-directional. It's totally up to you. I'm just giving you ideas and perspective. But if we spread your money in different areas, different ways, it's very difficult for the market to really take you out. Now, some of that other part that we talked about, the non-directional, you could see I've got right here, where I've got a good chunk non-directional and I could split some of that up into iron condors. I could split it all up into some calendars and some double diagonals. I could do some in butterflies. So you might be wondering, well, do I go ahead and do more calendars? Should I do iron condors? Should I, which, which strategy is better? The reality is, is just take your pick. You could do all iron condors for non-directional and all diagonals for bullish or long portfolio. You might even skip out on the uh, day trades or speculative trades if you want, uh, because maybe you're more retired. Maybe you don't have time to watch the market. Maybe you don't care for that type of trading. And that's totally okay. I'm just giving you an ideal perspective of how a portfolio could be constructed when you're dealing with the option side of things. Because many people, they just go ahead and they look at things um, from, hey, I just do this one trade. And you could do that. But you are stacking a lot of risk and concentration into one thing. Now, that could be a good thing when things are working out. It could also be a bad thing when things do not work out. So be a little bit more careful and be a little bit more mindful when things do not go your way. So in either case, uh, we've got this kind of construction and different ways of looking at it. You could also look at it from a uh, bucket standpoint. So if we have uh, buckets, you're just looking at, hey, where's the money coming from? So you have different buckets and different areas where you're making money, just like in any business. And that's what we're doing with these trades. We have different strategies like an iron condor. It could be a calendar. It could be diagonal. And some of these could be theta trades. And then you could do the same type of thing where you're making money from delta or appreciation, but you could also do, you know, a butterfly, iron condor here as well. And it's just creating a different diversification. So whatever method you like to going and looking at your portfolio construction, whether it's buckets, pie shapes, triangles, doesn't matter. The point is, is we're spreading our money and capital. If we look at it from a trading platform, unfortunately, it's not as nice to be able to move things around into different um, baskets uh, or buckets, which I kind of wish it, it would be more a little more visual. But a lot of things are more traditional right here, linear and tabular. It is nice from seeing all your numbers very quickly. Uh, but I wish you had different views as well that you could kind of move things around. But anyway, as we go in and take a look at this, you can see I start organizing my um, portfolio construction here into different baskets. So here I might have zero days till expiration trades, which I don't have any today. Uh, those are fast. I might have a risk array trade. So I 
create some different types of trades where I'm overlapping a lot of things. I could be selling some puts into different areas. So there's some trades under there. I've got some verticals where I might be selling some premiums. I got some uh, directional things maybe on Twitter. I got some theta stuff going on. Uh, I've got some hedges there and some long portfolios. So as I look into all of these, uh, each one of these are making me or losing me different amounts of capital, some more than others. And what you're trying to do is just split up these different profits and losses so that way they're not too crazy or extended in one or the other. If you put too much capital into any one position, it can be a huge problem. So as you start building things out, like let's say you might want to go in and start building out more theta trades. Like right now, I wouldn't mind doing some on, let's say, some of the banks because we just finished up some earnings. So let's say I go into Goldman Sachs and I'll go in maybe 29 days um, and I'll go right at the money right here and we'll do let's just sell some premium here let me go to uh 55 strikes we'll go in and we'll sell some premium so what you'll see here is i'll start adding some and this will give you an example of how you might add to a portfolio or position um and now i might say okay well let me do like five contracts here and i've got myself an iron condor and i'll sell that confirm and send and as I confirm and send, we're going to go and put it into our theta spread. So there we go. And then I'll do a Wells Fargo. Okay. Also, earnings got released just not too long ago. And I might do something maybe about at the 47 calendar spread. These are cheaper spreads. Nothing too crazy. Put in a, you know, maybe six of those. And then I'll put another one maybe at the 46 level. So it's going to be kind of like a double calendar. And I'll put in three of those and I'll put some at the 45s as well. We'll do the puts on that one uh, just because it's under the price. So now I might say, okay, well, let me go about something like this. So I've got a construction where I'm creating a nice little rounded area. And you might think, well, it's not a true calendar. No, it's not. But trading gets a little more messy. Um, it's, you know, it's not perfect where you're looking at, hey, this is the basic construction. This is the strategy. It's kind of like running or drawing. Yeah, you got the drawing tablet. This is how you draw at the beginning doing the skeleton sketch. But later on, as you get more creative, you draw the way that you want to draw. And here is the same thing. So as I go into the theta spreads, once you've got the basic construction, at the end of the day, it just comes down to your delta theta vegas um, and some of your greeks and numbers and the risks that you have on hand and you're starting to just overlap some trades and some trades you're making some money on and some trades will be at a loss and that's kind of what you're doing is you're you're constructing some of these um calendars here and you're starting to build out this position here on my right here goldman sachs wells fargo you know i've got some stuff going right here and we've got some trades that are also working orders here and you might have to tweak some of those so we'll cancel and replace. Go ahead, try and push that. Put some more theta trades on there. Cancel and replace. Push that order a little bit more. And now we've got ourselves a construction on Wells Fargo that could be ready to you know, collect some premium or theta. If I'm looking to invest long, like let's say I'm looking to invest a little more in AMD right here, this trade is kind of burning me right now. I've got zero days to go. I'll just show you that. So I've taken this trade to a full expiration because it went against me. So let's go in and take a look at it. So there we go. So this trade went to a full expiration down about $6,000 on that one. Um, what I can do is go ahead and close this trade out or let it run through expiration, not that it's a big deal. Uh, but if I want to go ahead and re-add to a long portfolio on this trade, I could say, okay, well, why don't I go a little bit more like 64 days out? I could go 92 days out and start building it out, maybe buying some verticals into it. And I could start slow just by four and I could buy another four later, another four and another four. And that's kind of what I might end up doing uh, just to build out that position. I don't have to do it all in one day, but that's the process of going in and uh, kind of starting to build out that position because now I'm going into July and eventually I'm looking for that stock to snap up. Yeah, maybe this time it didn't work out, but I need to be able to be comfortable with doing this three to five times of losses um, to where maybe the next round when it does pop, 
you know, I can be okay or break even on that. So that's kind of what you're looking for is starting to rebuild that position um, and trying to make it viable and, and make the trade and investment work. So anyway, that's kind of the way that you would do it in the platform is just slowly work these different trades. And there we go. We've got some filled. So now I've got these next four uh, spreads here working for me. And these are small, only risking about $740. But if it goes up, you know, I'm just looking for a uh, little bit of capital appreciation here, a little pop. And then I could take off one or two contracts and then take off another one or two contracts. So this might be the approach you take to building out a portfolio slowly. And with time, these things will continue to get bigger. You'll have like your theta trades, you have your some other things, directional, vertical premium. You can split it up however you want. And you can always look at your spread um, or area by just going in right here and going in saying, hey, I just want to look at the verticals. Um, or I want to go ahead and you know, look at the long portfolio and you can see all your numbers then right there, how everything's behaving and doing. So anyways, this is the approach that I would take to kind of building out a portfolio and how you might think about it when it comes to trading options. I hope that gives you a little bit of a perspective, maybe a diagram, whether the triangle part helped or the pie shape, or maybe uh, just overview of going into the platform and seeing a lot of more positions than just having one position uh, gave you a bigger picture and overview. Whatever approach you take, make sure you spread your capital and your money in different spots and sectors. And if you want me to take a look at some of the things you're doing, just to give you a mastermind or ideas and different concepts uh, to to plan things out and and maybe pinpoint some of the things you need to watch out for, feel free to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching session uh, on the website and uh, where I can share things with you on video to make sure that maybe you're on the right path or even just taking the right approach when it comes to learning and your education. Anyways, thanks for joining me. Enjoy the rest of the week ahead and I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care.